Hello again Midgardian, today we'll run through the basics of the card system in Ragnarok Origin Global. First we will explain what are cards, what are the card tiers slash rarity, what are the cards categories, how do we get cards, how do we use cards, how do we break down cards and finally how do we upgrade cards. Cards or monster drops that can be equipped to any eligible piece of gear for a set increase of certain stats. There's more to these cards than meets the eye, as you are able to awaken slash upgrade these cards. This process not only increases the card's base stats, it can also introduce new buffs. There are a few tier of cards namely green slash common cards, blue slash rare cards, purple slash epic cards, gold slash legendary cards and red slash MVP cards. The cards are then further break down to different category, general, illusion, puppet and MVP. There are a few ways for you to acquire cards in Ragnarok Origin, mainly from purple star coins, blue star coins, card album fragments, ultra rare card coupons, card coupons, illusion card redeem fragments, and precious card fragments. You can get these coins, coupons and fragments from events, MVP boss drops and Ragnarok Origin shop. If you like to gamble and feel blessed by the RNG gods, you can try the wishing function to get cards. You will need diamonds or card coupons for common cards and neon berries or ultra rare card coupons for advanced cards. Only use this if you are like Mr. Fitzgerald. <laughs> You can get purple cards from Purple Star Coins and Wishing Shop. You will get card points every time you use the Wishing Shop. These points can be used to exchange card of your choice. The amount of points required depend on the card's rarity. The best cards cost around 5,000 points. If you're hated by the RNG gods like me, then you should try getting cards from the trade shop instead. Here you can buy the cards with Zeni coins. There are limited cards available for a short duration every day. After the cards are restocked, there is a 5 minutes window before you can purchase them. Every day, the trade shop will restock cards at 12 o'clock, 1600 hours, and 2000 hours server time. If you're thinking to buy multiple cards at one time, we wish you good luck. Buying cards from the trade shop is not recommended for people with slow hands slash fingers. It's harder to purchase multiple cards at one go. We do not recommend it, especially if you're a slow poke sloth like me. Let's try again, but this time only set to purchase one card at a time. As you can see, it's easier to purchase one card at a time than in bulk. <laughs> You can also get cards from the Redemption Shop. Illusion Card Redeem Fragments and Precious Card Fragments are used to redeem cards at the NPC. Illusion Cards are a weaker version of the original card. We do not recommend getting Illusion Cards unless you have no other options. The Illusion Cards are a joke compared to the original card stats. Take the Dracula card as an example, the original card provides 15% magic damage and 100 magic attack while the illusion only provides 4% magic damage. Take another example, 
the popular Minerus card. The original card provides 20 physical attack power, 20 magic attack power and additional 18% damage to large sized monsters while the illusion only provides 8% damage to large sized monsters without any attack power stats. We have another category of cards called the puppet cards. These cards are slotted into faceware, mouthware, and backware. Some players are not aware there are actually two versions of Puppet Cards. The two versions are Puppet Cards 1 and Puppet Cards 2. Puppet Cards 1 are free to play friendly and can be acquired from the store or rare card album. Puppet Card 2 meanwhile are strictly pay to win cards and can be acquired from auctions. We do not recommend getting cards from auctions if you are an anchovy, tuna, or shark. Auction House or the domain for whales slash sultans. Do not go there unless you want to be eaten alive. No, 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 no. Puppet Cards 2 always have better stats than Puppet Cards 1. Puppet Cards 1 are usually PvE oriented while Puppet Cards 2 are PvP oriented. The final and most difficult way to get cards are by killing the monsters itself. Depending on the rarity of the card, the drop rate differs. This method is recommended for masochists or those who believe in the RNG gods. Every time you kill a specific monster, the card drop progress meter aka pity meter will increase by a small percent. The higher the percent of this meter, the higher the chance the card will drop for that specific monster. It's fondly known as pity meter for the RNG gods having to pity on us pleasant. The meter will only increase if you're not fatigued or on monster annihilation mode. When the specific card drop, the pity meter will reset back to zero. Card drops are not affected by level penalty. This means you can focus on grind the monster that is lower than your current level and it will not affect the drop rates. Candies does not improve card drop rate. It only improve you pity slash card progression rate. Only certain equipment have card slots and this is indicated by the number of socket available in an equipment. You can then spend advanced diamonds as well as Eden coins to add socket. Once the socket is enabled, you can then add the desired card. Please note each card are specified for a certain type of equipment only. When you switch to a different equipment, you will have to add the socket again for the new equipment. If you have extra cards that you don't equip, you can actually store the cards in the card album. Storing cards in the album grants you extra stats. You can also dismantle the extra cards for fragments. This card fragments are used to upgrade slash awaken cards. Different tier cards that is dismantled will provide different tier of card shard. For example, dismantling blue card will give you blue card shard and dismantling purple card will give you purple card shard. The amount of shard received is depending on the card tier. The following are the amount. You can also choose to sell your cards in the trade shop for Zenny. The amount of Zenny you received are fixed. You can also sell purple tier cards and beyond in the black market. Please note you will not get the auctioned amount of Zenny if the card is auctioned. You can upgrade a card by first awakening it. Depending on the card tier, different type of shards is needed. You will need 50 shards for awakening. Once a card has been awakened, you can level up a card up to level 15. Every 5 card levels, you will need to promote the card using a duplicate copy of the awakened card. The only exception is when you are promoting purple cards. These will require a number of purple card fragments that can be obtained by dismantling any purple card. After the promotion, the card will gain a star. Every star will provide additional buff or stats. Here are the card leveling card promotion cost. To promote a green card to 3 star, you need a total of 10 card duplicate. To promote a blue card to 3 star, you need a total of 7 card duplicate and to promote a purple card to 3 star, you need a total of 3 card duplicate.
You can also reset or return the resource that you used to upgrade slash awaken the cards. This is a good way to save card shards as they are scarce. Future updates should include ways for us to exchange purple cards from NPC shop. This feature is available in Ragnarok Origin Korea server. That's all for this topic. If you enjoy the content, please leave a like and subscribe. This helps my channel a lot and means a lot to me. Thank you for watching.